There will be two new faces in Wisconsin's congressional delegation after next year's election. This after two big departures. Republican Sean Duffy announced two weeks ago that he'll resign September 23rd for family reasons. Now Republican Jim Sensenbrenner says he'll retire after this term, capping a 40 year career in Congress. I talked to him at his office last week. He told me he wanted to leave on his terms. He said he's most proud of his work on the Patriot Act and the Americans with Disabilities Act. I also asked him about the big name state Republicans who have left the stage in recent years. So some big name Republicans are out now, including Speaker Ryan, Governor Walker, Congressman Sean Duffy, as you know. I mean, where does the state of the Republican Party stand in Wisconsin now? It stands pretty good. You know, we have a bench. Uh, and there will be no lack of qualified Republicans running for my seat for the endorsement and in the primary. And I would imagine that there will be three or four Republicans running for Sean Duffy's seat. He said the race to replace him could be a scrum. Matt Smith reports the 5th District is an uphill climb for Democrats. Okay, hey, time out, time out. The second longest serving member of the House. Ah, you promised, remember? Wisconsin Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner has never shied away from confrontation. You can either sit down and wait your turn or go out in the hallway. Or his constituents. No, they should not be released to the public. But one battle he says he'll stay out of is who will replace him. I'm not going to support anybody. You know, I give them all advice. Don't kill each other. That's very important. The field of potential Republican replacements could easily surpass a dozen in a strong Republican district Sensenbrenner has held for decades. It would be hard to believe that the blue wave would become a blue flood. You would have to have a flood of Noah's proportion, an epic flood for that district to go a Democratic. And it's not just the fifth. All eyes will be on come 2020. Both Sensenbrenner and Sean Duffy's district will don a new political era. That's a rural district, sort of a Trumpist district. Uh, would the primary be in any way a referendum on President Trump versus old fashioned conservative uh, values? Will it be somewhat competitive in November? You know, if, if President Trump were to lose Wisconsin, then there's a possibility in Duffy's district, but not in Sensenbrenner's district, that a Democrat would have a fighting chance. The other big question is money. Who will raise the hundreds of thousands of dollars needed to win? Many already making phone calls all week and long. Has anyone approached you specifically saying they want to run for your seat? Oh, yes, they have. And, who? Uh, I'm not going to say who, but what I can say is, is that my response is the same. There are a lot of friends of mine running. I intend to be neutral. Matt joining us on set now. So we're already hearing a lot of names getting thrown out there, including from the governor for this 5th Congressional District. Yeah, so let's tear that apart a little bit, this fascinating interview you just had. He really floated out his son's name, right? And we're going to see this a lot for a number of candidates, high-profile Republicans like the former governor, throwing out his son's name, who is 25 years old, as a test balloon, for example, to kind of see where this goes, what the public reaction is. We could have upwards of 15 to 20 candidates. We've both been on the phone this past week hearing a, a whole slew of names. He mentioned Scott Fitzgerald, Leah Vukmir, uh, the Waukesha County Executive, Ben Vogel, who works for Senator Ron Johnson. So there's just a plethora of names, as you know, that are coming in and out. There is one Democrat who has said he will run, uh, Tom Pauselwitz. He was Sensenbrenner's opponent in 2018. He said he's going to run again. He announced on Twitter. But this is going to be a, a Republican field, as we just heard in the piece. Yeah, I think people know it's just a, yeah. a big Republican area. And there are several factors, though, that we need to think about. It's not just if you're interested. It's right. can you get the money? Everyone's going to be interested who lives right. in this district, right? I mean, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, perhaps, to take control of this district. Here's the thing. You need to raise the money. And it's going to be interesting to see where the party lines up, where the big donors line up. You're talking upwards of a million dollars that will likely need to be raised to remain competitive and win this primary. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Okay, Matt, so let's switch gears a little bit and talk about another really competitive race, the Milwaukee mayoral race. Democratic State Senator Lena Taylor made it official last week. She will challenge Mayor Tom Barrett. Let's hear from her. This is not my Milwaukee, and I will not sit on the sidelines and watch us expect to take this as our status quo. 
Mayor Barrett hasn't officially said if he's going to run again. Yeah, uh, all indications are that he is going to. He has hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. He told our Kent Wayne Scott uh, last week that, that he's going to make the announcement on his own time. The question will be money again. Can any of these other candidates raise anywhere close to, to what he has? And if you look at the history of Milwaukee, Milwaukee voters don't just replace their mayors. There has to be something catastrophic or, or a new election, a clear field to typically do that if we look to history. All right, it's definitely a race we'll be keeping an yeah. eye on. Thanks, Matt. Next, the help that's on the way for Wisconsin farmers.